welcome to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. Tonight, we wrap up Gridiron Rivals for 2021. That's right, the last game for Gridiron for the year, where our esports teams battle out against the same school the Boise State University football team plays against. Boise State and Central Michigan were set to square off in the Arizona Bowl, and with that game not happening, these two teams will now face off on the virtual field for bragging rights. Of course, I am your host, Jared Baratakasunioni, joined by Cosmic and Vagar. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be here. You guys got the comfy seats. I got the <laughs> one that's all trepidatious and I can fall and hurt myself. Y'all ready for some R6 action? I'm excited to see what happens for sure. Cool. Oh, yeah, Before we match. jump into the action, of course, let's go and throw it over to Jay Tust of KTVV to explain why Boise State football had to withdraw from the Arizona Bowl. Let's we'll start through it real quick. Perfect, but you... Boise State Athletic Director Jeremiah Dickey summed it up best today, saying it's devastating. For the second year in a row, Boise State will not play in a bowl game. The Broncos forced to withdraw from Friday's Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl due to positive COVID-19 cases within the program. Broncos have shut down all team activities as a result of COVID-19 protocols. Boise State will now end Andy Avalos' first season as head coach with a record of 77-5. Boise State players had three days off to go home and spend time with family during Christmas before getting back to Boise yesterday. But due to snow and flight cancellations, some players weren't able to get back into town until today, which caused a delay in testing and results. Broncos were scheduled to fly to Tucson tomorrow. Meanwhile, Central Michigan, the Broncos opponent for the game, arrived in Tucson last night. Boise State Athletic, Athletic Director Jeremiah Dickey releasing a statement today saying, quote, we feel for the young men in our program who were very much looking forward to closing out their season and for some, their football careers. I would personally like to thank Kim Adair and her team at the Arizona Bowl for putting, putting together a first class student athlete and fan experience that we are extremely disappointed to miss, end quote. Now, Dickey told us this afternoon that the Broncos followed their testing protocols they have used all season long. Upon returning to Boise, unvaccinated and symptomatic personnel were tested. They then reached a threshold that required the testing of the entire team or more positives showed up. It has been a rough go in terms of Boise State Bowl games for the Broncos the last four years. This year, the team forced to withdraw due to COVID-19. Last year, the team opting out of playing in one. The year before that, a lot. And it is kind of a sad thing, but again, gives an opportunity for both these two teams to really get the big W for their school representatively. So quick question to you gentlemen. I have a set aside here, my personal favorite and my sleeper operator that we may see. Let's go with uh, Vagar. What do you think is the best operator we may see tonight? Well, on offense, I think we're going to definitely see a bit of Ella. She's just, or er, on Zofia, my bad, right. her sister. Um, she's just so versatile and so useful in every situation. So she, mm -hmm. you can pick her anytime, and she's always going to be of some use. Right. And Cosmic, do you have any sleeper operators that may see some play tonight? You know, I always think that um, Recruit is a little underrated. <laughs> nah, I'm, just, I'm totally kidding. Um, that's a great question. I think, I think we might see uh, a bit of a Maverick pick. Sometimes it's good to get, those, uh, to get through those hard breach surfaces, you know, pick those things off. Um, hopefully we see some, some cool Maverick plays tonight for sure. You guys have great information, but you're both wrong. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's Sledge and Dokubi. Sledge being the best operator and Dokubi the sleeper agent of the night. We'll see if either of those two will rear their uh, interesting heads. I've seen some Sledge in competitive play for the Boise State roster before, so it's not too far-fetched of an idea, but... I don't know. I Maybe just because of the fact that they swing a jar giant hammer around, I'm more akin to them. Uh, I feel like that's my personal play style. Who needs guns when you have big hammer, right? Yeah, I mean, you can never go wrong with the hammer. You can't EMP right. it. It doesn't really care about any of that stuff. You just swing it and go in. Yeah, absolutely. And again, just a, a reminder for the event rules. This is that gridiron league. Boise State football players would have been playing against against Seamish for tonight, but uh, due to, you know, of course, precautions and safety reasons, we were not able to do so. But we're moving into our six. 
And the way the R6 works, it's a best of three. It's a first to seven. It's the three maps pick. Some were banned. We'll get to the ones that remained uh, to be played tonight. And the first to seven within the confines of those maps win. You got to win by two or the first one to get to eight in OT will take this one away. And as, of course, we get ready for the start of the first match, let's remind our friends on Twitch chat to support your team, celebrate the successes, and be respectful to the other fans or mods will remove anyone who violates the, the rules for the chat. So... Don't do it. <laughs> I won't be in chat, of course. So, you know, I won't be watching you. But I, I trust you, Twitch chat, which is a dangerous thing to say. <laughs> you guys, uh, we, we did say uh, production provided us the maps. We have Coastline being the first one. What's your guys' take on the map as a whole? It's a it's an interesting one. There's a, Depending on the site, the map plays so differently. So there's... Um, such a large presence on the being on the outside of the map mm -hmm. and it can sometimes just be a hassle to get inside with the roamers just running around and actually dealing with them to even attack the site right and any words wise words of advice cosmic for these players as we head into this first map well, i think that's a good point you know you got to watch those line of sights um got to be careful with those with those early picks you know people trying to get um, just into the building in general. Um, I always think that uh, Fuse might be a, a pick for this because you know, you've got those small encapsulated areas in which mm -hmm. um, that could be a possibility. So just kind of watching out for those things. We see Thatcher and Jackal being taken away. Big surprises at all? Mm, Jackal's fairly common in, in any game, but right. on this map specifically. He's just so good at rooting out roamers because he can cut them off from the rest of the site so they can't just retreat to safety once they get tracked. Valkyrie being banned away as well. And the last defender ban. Have to see here. Okay. The Mira. Interesting. Not the craziest thing just because that window is, you know, dependent on placement, can be really powerful for information gathering. But... We'll have to see what kind of interesting options these two teams. So we can clearly see Boise State's going to be on the attacker side first, with Central Michigan going to be on the defense. There goes the Mozzie and Jaeger uh, with the Alibi, or Alibi as we were <laughs> kind of funnily alluding to, with the Kaid. <laughs> uh, smoke and then, oh, wait a minute. Don't you dare do this to me, Boise State. Yes! I do believe that's locked in. It's not pick six yet, but that is a sledge. The first <laughs> round. I'm in. I'm invested. There we are. What do you do? Okay. Brandenburg switching over to... Let's see here. Waiting for that pick six to come through on the other side. And the buck will come through. Interesting. So mm -hmm. looking at the lineups, you guys feel like you can pick apart what these two teams are trying to do? For Boise State specifically, I can already... I believe I already see... Um, they're taking... Obviously, they need to have the hard breacher and then they pick six it out. Mm -hmm. So their ideas are going to get them to be ready for a defense against them just blowing a big hole in the, one of the main reinforcements and then going in. Right. But with uh, the buck swapped out, what they can do is they can start shooting underneath with his skeleton key and just kind of weed them out of here and make it really hard for them to feel safe in their own sight. For sure. I, I also think the uh, the bug one is an interesting one, and, and it's not uncommon for, for Coastline specifically, but I feel like uh, Buck generally is is more of a situational operator, obviously, because you don't get that opportunity very very often to uh, you know shoot from underneath or even up top to kind of open those floors up, open those ceilings up, and, um, and get some good advantage there. Looks like main entrance will be possibly what they're considering. Nice spread, though. I'll put all those eggs in one basket. No action emerging just yet, but it is only a matter of time before bullets are sprayed and exchanged. Slow and steady is the race, though, and plenty of time in the bank to do so. We, we don't often see a lot of movement happen until maybe like the final 60 seconds, but see how whether or not Boise State wants to play conservatively or if they want to be on that aggressive front that they're known to do. Chance for some wall. A little bit of information gathered, but 12 gauge does not feel comfortable holding that alone. Retreat further in towards maybe one bomb site. But you say really tipping their toes and dipping them in before they get comfortable with the water temperature just yet. Just under the two minute mark. Here comes the sledge. Opening that door. And that's up. the only hammer hit we'll see all game. Shots across the wall. 
does not find any target for sustainable damage, but they did find a bomb site. Got that Alibi just mocking him over there. <laughs> You always got to wonder if it's the real one who <laughs> just took its place right exactly. after. Okay, Boise State will suffer the first casualty as 12 gauge will find one piece and will be Neon taken down. Still have some drones available though, so maybe trying to gather an opportunity to relocate or 12 gauge is really trying to find someone on the straggling end to, to capitalize on. Did lose a, a fair amount of life there on Legends. But again, Brenner Bear losing most of their life as well. It's not really an even trade. Pasta will take a fair amount of damage as well. So the trades are going favorably minus that first casualty. But Milk will fall, and it's an even 4v4. Boise State has some information on some enemy placements. Brenner Bear will fall, and the will also go down. It's 3 versus 4. Corn Tex, as well as Retrospect, full health. But compared to the three full health bars on the side of Central Michigan, it's almost even. It's all about whether or not these two teams can capitalize, and they do so. The bullets will spray across, and there goes two members just like that, like flies. Three to two. Retrospect and Tex. Tex taking a little bit of chip damage. Now Retrospect will be found, and there goes the diffuser as well. It's a 1v3 situation. Tex is guessing where they are. Knows that they're capitalizing, pushing forward. Shots across the board. They know they're behind the cover. He's waiting for the peak. Will his patience pay off, or is it just a bait? It is. Taking so much damage, he loses the 1v1. And the defenders will be successful. Central Michigan taking first blood in the round. Boop. So as, as we saw there, uh, a little bit of capitalization uh, from the side of Seamish. They were able to say, okay, we got this pick here. We just have to hold these fronts. What, moving into the second round, do you think Boise State wants to do a little bit differently? So I feel like... The Central Michigan team had a lot of roamers, just mm -hmm. very spread out, and they would just kind of put it down to gunfights and good rotations. But I think the, the biggest crutch for uh, Boise State here was that there just wasn't um, enough team play right. to go and weed out those roamers. It was a lot of just going in, taking 1v1s. And they had some good trades, but in the end, mm -hmm. it kind of just whittled them down. Right. Mm -hmm. I also think it came down to um, the anticipation of the enemy, knowing where they were going to enter and preparing for that, you know, putting up the necessary defenses, making sure that they have those those rotation holes through those walls that they didn't reinforce, um, having those deployable covers up uh, when they know that they're going to try to, you know, breach from those locations is definitely uh, pretty vital. Sticking with the sledge. There's a Tachanka here, Baratel. Yeah, the Tachanka. <laughs> You, you always have to lose your ability to form, you know, accurate sentences when you're talking about Chachanka. It's Chachanka. <laughs> we'll see if that does prove to be the case, though. As you mentioned, it's paramount for teams to be successful when it comes to these competitive and higher skill cap games for your team to kind of move as a unit because if you fall, you're trading one for one. Uh, that's the optimal you know, path you gain information. You get that one for one trade, and then from that point forward, you can continue to sweep out. To keep going this kind of solo mentality, it's going to be easy for them to be picked off, but just a, a very easy some, uh, something to adjust. Legend's trying to find any sort of angle through the floor. Got to be careful, though, because those toes are now exposed to danger. I don't know about you guys, but getting your toe shut off, shot off is uh, not, not the most enjoyable experience for anybody. Yeah, I think the glass is an interesting pick, uh, as you were saying before, that, you know, as they're kind of gearing towards more 1v1 fights. Oh, that laser gate is so strong. <laughs> Just trying to get it mitigated a little bit. They know that Tex is in this room, I think, but... The patience for the rest of these members, we can see now that they're playing a little bit more cohesively. They're all within at least the same, I don't know, 10, 15 feet of each other, either on a vertical level, and that will result in a free pick for them. Maybe not so free as Corn is in blinking health territory. Wish he can throw the hammer through the wall. That would be the coolest move ever, but unfortunately not available. On the backside, though, Tex will be sniped out from Milk. I think getting this uh, pick for Sledge here would be critical. Oh, oh he got sneezed at and he <coughs> fell. A nice 3v4. Wissy State now 
This is the perfect time for them not to, th to, to thin out, but more is to congeal as a unit. You really double down on the fact that you have three members looking and kind of call out and try to hope that your your reaction time's a little bit better, making these gun trades a nice exchange of bullets coming through, but not able to get the pick. Legends will get away with half their health missing. Nope, more chip damage coming through. Just under that, uh, I guess, second health bar. So just about, um, what would you say, like 60 health? We'll just throw an arbitrary number out there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like about 60 health remaining on Legends right now. <laughs> They, they've put so much to try and uh, get this Aruni out of here. And what a cool hand. Bashing Robo down hand. entire doors <laughs> or walls. Can't imagine brushing your teeth very easy with that arm. You either squeeze all the toothpaste out of the tooth tube <laughs> or you are just you know, can't control the toothbrush. Not going to get a pea-sized amount for sure. No, not at all. Retrospect still has some teammates to back him up, but they are desperately running out of time. We see at the top, the 10 second mark is quickly approaching. They need to swing themselves into action. And there goes some picks, 3v3. Continuing to push forward, and there goes a 3v2. They're going to hold this with an iron vice grip, but it's an exchange of blows back and forth, and now it's just going to be Brenner Bear versus the world. He does get, no, he does not get the pick. He will actually fall. And it just seemed like Boise State had the right plan of action. They were able to go trade for trade there, but the panic that induced once the timer hit that near zero mark caused them to go into a, a flurry of bad decisions, and it didn't end up working out well for them. Central Michigan now two up, and there's Dr. Jotonko. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the flora is coming out. Interesting. I like that, and we've switched over the sledge user. Corn says, I'm tired of this guy, but Tech says, how can you be tired of the best operator in the game? <laughs> Come on, man. Mute's going to be, I think, an adaptation for... Really good use, I think, when it comes down. I think could definitely call out the pick six into the ace. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that is an interesting one, to say the least. Luckily, you can't mute the sledgehammer. <laughs> There's literally no counter except the guns that literally everyone has. It's true. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting to see how their composition has changed a little bit as they've, you know, have gone through these first two rounds and kind of are understanding uh, what the, what the play style is and how how Central Michigan is approaching this um, on the on the defense. You know, this being the sixth time that that Boise State and Central Michigan are going against each other. The first, you know, five matches uh, or five times that they've gone against each other, um, Boise State has won three of those. So we can definitely see some of that. Uh, that energy coming from Central Michigan to mm -hmm. want to even that out, make it make it three to three for sure. And with this being also a new roster for the Boise State team, they're they have a lot to prove. You know, they have to they have a, some veterans, if you will, from from previous semesters, but some new newcomers to the team. And it's whether or not you can gel with those new teammates to that really show that you are a, a fully adaptable team. Which you know, knowing the game, the mechanics, the gunplay having favorite characters and knowing how to play them well are all great factors to a good team. But I think the most important thing is your ability to adapt. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, going back to, to the ban phase, uh, seeing what kind of benefits it brings to uh, the composition here, you know, we're seeing a lot of, of, of tech-based, you know, you have you have the Jaeger, you have the Kaid or mm -hmm. Cade, um, <laughs> and, you know, the Alibi, uh, Mute even, that, that could have easily been countered by Thatcher, um, that that has prevented that kind of play, mm -hmm. um, and even even the Valk pick, uh, you know, just preventing that, preventing that, you know, information gain and and what kind of information they can they can get from that. So, oh, they did switch. Oh, they switched Corn, who's now watching text currently. So far, text still being alive means the sledge is still. Ableton maybe knock down some of these walls. Nice prediction and premonition. And that will pay off big time, even it up four to four. I mean, when it comes down to it, you're sprinting down the hallway with all this gear on. You're heard from a mile away, but <laughs> Texas got his headphones on the right way so far. So that's a good sign. Nice peek, but the shoulder jiggle will be there. Does he not? He doesn't. He doesn't find any hits or hit markers on that. But in the meantime, bot time for his team to find the other bomb site. Retrospect finding some damage into his health bar. Legends will trade over as well. It'll be a double kill for Gore-Tec, though. The shoulder jiggle, but the shot's across, and that's exactly what we're talking about. Two teammates looking the same angle, covering each other's back. 
And that will give another man lead over to Central Michigan. It's two versus three. Health bar is no one's favorite just yet, but the snipe and the full damage coming through, and unfortunately, Tex will take a nap. Neon holding on for dear life. Shots across the board. Gortek will be shut down from the triple kill opportunity. And now it's a 1v2. 40 seconds on the board. This is a perfect time amount for something magical to happen. The sprinting alarm said. Oh, but they are not able to find it. And there goes some shots across the way. And looks like possible actually pick one up for their team. And Central Michigan now 3-0 and on the map. Yeah, those alibis have been paying off big time just Panic inducing. <gasps> Multiple loss. Woo! <laughs> That's exactly what happens with Alibi, right? You just make multiple mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. Production's yeah. on point. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it seemed like uh, almost anticipated there that, you know, he was kind of hiding behind his alibis as he um, was was trying to get a good line of sight through that hallway, which, which definitely confused the Ash as she mm -hmm. came in because, you know, she initially shot at that. And then started getting shot from that direction, so didn't really understand, you know, where they might have been. Mm -hmm. And even it, the Kaid isn't, you know, look <laughs> like alibi <Yeah>. there. <laughs> it's gonna be a meme, Twitch chat. I'm sorry, it's now Kaid. It's truthfully what it is. So we, I think we saw Nomad and Lion being swapped in for Boise State. What does that signal to you guys? I think uh, this means they're really tired of these roamers. <laughs> yeah, they just want to win out. They're what I find interesting, Boise State likes to push and try to challenge like these 1v1s, 1v2s on these long angles. I don't know. I feel like there's one uh, one operator that's really good at distracting your opponents while you're trying to push on to them. <laughs> Does he happen to have a hammer? or? I don't know. <laughs> Might have a hammer. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, going back to, to Doc's keys of the game, which I don't, I don't know if we we went over them, but I mean, with everything, it, it's not taking a fair fight. You know, they're right. they're 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 going into all these scenarios, um, just kind of anticipating that they can get, you know, some good picks off, uh, like you were saying, in these these longer hallways, um, which isn't always the case, and it's not really working out for them. So I think they're trying to adjust for that a little bit. Um, can't really tell if they're sticking together much more than they have been. Uh, previously, but they're definitely trying. It looks like they're intel gaining a bit more than they did last time. You know, they're they're trying to make sure that they can get as much as they can, kind of get the general area of uh, mm. where people might be. It's creeping around this drone, inch by inch. Really covering the angle for them not to. It's pretty much the eyes on the wall, but they're just on the floor, trying to find anything they can use and not really gaining much. Yes, you can signal that things are clear, but in, the, in a game like Rainbow Six Siege, you know, things don't often stay clear for long. It looks like they're making a, a, com, a, com, a com, combined assault here on the second floor. And then we have that is big. Retrospect coming on the ground floor, I believe. With uh, Mozzie down now, they those drones won't be able to drive around. Right. Exactly. Premonition. Game sense is there, but no one's going to peek this stairwell for corn, unfortunately. If Flores, I mean, we, we're not seeing any of those explosive drones come out. and I mean, you use that pretty much on cooldown, right? Yeah, essentially. I, I think the, you know, you, you kind of want to use those sparingly as, as he goes down. I um, want to use those sparingly because... You know, once they're gone, you just become, you know, just a, another operator. Like, um, all of his utility is gone. Okay. Nice. Oh, wow, the pixel hit through the window. Yeah, that's the magic pixel right there. <laughs> those those are kinds of shots you're like, okay, but how did you see me, though? Nice. And then that time as well, Pasta will be da dangerously low. Put him through a strainer. He's almost out of sauce here. <laughs> just need a strong breeze. Just, you know, he's not El Dante, but that is going to be a nice <laughs> done noodle. As Legends of Fallen, Boise State showing signs of life, and it's uh, on the back of this more, I guess, information gathering play style, as you mentioned, Cosmic. They're going to be found out. Gortek kind of roaming around, proving to bite them in the butt just a little bit, lose a little bit of wind in their sails, but a 1v3 is a very comfortable position for Boise State. Not impossible for Central Mission to go up 4-0, but it is a, a very tall order. And that's how you start it, but you there do miss is. the shots. Retrospect will find it. Now it would be Boise State getting one back in their favor. No clones there to distract me, mister, <laughs> so I get to shoot you no matter what. 
So you have to pick the same comp. Really felt like they dealt with the roaming both well in, in terms of the operators that they picked, but as well as in play style. They were able to really use those drones to such a great effect that removed the, the surprise. They made a surprise from these roams. So I think mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good choice, keeping it the same. I want to see the explosive drone, though, from Flores before he <laughs> falls. Yeah, I think that's going to be Pop a Pop the corn, thing. popcorn. <laughs> the Aruni six picked out. Oh! Interesting. It's time. They had to retire him at one point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such as a hang up the hammer for now, but I will be okay with the Ayana coming through. Yeah, I think in that last round, one of the one of the Defenders greatest benefits that was called out was uh, was the Mozzie pick relatively early on because, you know, that's what allowed them to to continue with that, uh, with the droning out and the intel gaining. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, multiple us. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be interesting uh, with the Iona. We were talking about them being a more intel-heavy team right. in their strategy, and I think they're going along with that now. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds left before insertion. Scoping out still. Of course, they can't physically move just yet, but that's okay. Setting up some good drones for sure. Yeah. It's always so interesting to see what kind of cheeky things you can get away with with your drones, like where you can jump them up into be part of a toolbox or <laughs> part of the bed frame or some mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then it's always saying you're, you've been spotted. And right. You yeah, exactly. Figure like, out for but how? You're never going to figure where out. Where are they? <laughs> you just light up the whole bedroom. You're bound to get it eventually. Down feathers everywhere, you know, <laughs> just a massacre. Well, I mean, with, with those with those being set up, they're they're essentially putting up their own... You know, security cameras that they can, yeah, they can check rotations and things like that. That's yeah, a very intuitive way to think about it. 12 gauge. Sadly, I don't think they're using a shotgun. I feel like that's a little bit misleading. Would have been poetic for sure. I to mean, be fair, though, milk or pasta not really remaining true to their name either. Because <laughs> there's, there's no chef-based character in the game, as uh, as far as I know. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, that's a, exactly. That's the. I heard the that's the next The operator cooks update. a meal for you, and it heals you a little bit. It'll be the next <laughs> healer. There's some, not to sidetrack too much, but there's some great dishes you can make with just pasta and milk. Pasta and milk. A little bit of seasoning, nice creamy sauce. Oh wow! Look at that. Mm. Nice trade. Pasta holding with the Iron Vice Group will be finally taken down. Retrospect knowing someone's down the hallway in a nice two-piece. Boise yeah. State that. leading in stride. And the health bar is not too crazy. Retrospect losing about half, but you take a two-kill lead for that half HP bar, I think that's worth it every time. Yeah, that Ion is already paying off. Oh, mm -hmm. Tex is going to be taken down. Just Toasted. Just that. <laughs> yep. Knock on wood. Yeah, I, I've noticed that uh, we're seeing a little bit more of sticking together. You know, they're watching those longer angles um, as their teammates move forward. You know, watching those doorways, making mm -hmm. sure that um, they're not going to make the same mistake that they did, you know, a couple rounds ago. With oh, it's about to go down. He finds him is. in the corner but cannot get the shots down. Wait, he, he does. Got he will be down. Oh Brenner Bear holding on to dear life, waiting for the teammates. Hey, team. Team, I'm over here. <laughs> Help me, please. <laughs> They're too busy getting other kills going down. Finds the bomb site. Oh my gosh. 12 gauge finding a nice angle here. And I think it was unseen, unscouted. No more lion charges either. Brenner Bear is going to be possibly just the sacrificial health bar to give information over to Corn to pick apart the final remnants of 12 gauge. But if I'm not mistaken, the fuser is going down. And it's only a matter of time before things get really sticky here for the side of Central Michigan. Explosions down. Open Finally up the sight line. I think they know he's there. Attackers recovered. There goes the diffuser. Haven't done it just yet. Ten seconds remain. Ten seconds remaining. 12 gauge needs to put some pressure to stop anything from happening, but the prone will go down. The shots will go down. It's a triple kill for 12 gauge. And the defenders we was not able to get the diffuser down. 12 gauge bought enough time and exerted enough pressure. That somehow Central Michigan was able to get that one locked up. You hate to see it. <laughs> you hate to see it. I'm that's impressed to see the uh, that, uh, the attachments that he had. Uh, like there was zero recoil as he was hip firing down there. But yeah, he was just keeping the pressure on him for sure. I saw the Flores um, 
finally come out. That right. was the explosion near the end there. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't quite get it close enough, but he just kept that pressure on him um, on that diffuser room, so they couldn't couldn't quite grab the diffuser for sure. I'm going to take a quad piece here for 12 gauge as well. But to be fair, doesn't count because they didn't use a shotgun. So <laughs> sorry, bud. 12 yep. gauge going over to the mute. Six picked over. Still sticking with the Ayana. I think they're anticipating the Ayana because yeah. that was six picked mm -hmm. as well. Right. We'll shoot. It's like a chess match at this point, right? Boise State has one round under the belt, but Central Michigan showing that they're very comfortable on defense. Could still be just the, the story of the map. We see in other competitive shooters that uh, some maps are a little bit sided towards one either attacking or defending. It's very well possible this could be the case here, but what we will have to see look really busting open a second staircase entrance there. <laughs> the first one wasn't good enough for them, I guess. Making his own doorways here. That's how you do it in R6. If only you could just collapse the whole building, you know? <laughs> <laughs> really open up the whole map. Oh, there's no walls to hide behind because all of the supporting walls have been removed. <laughs> just, just battle on a pile it's just of a, <laughs> It's like the Final Destination from Smash, but in R6. You know, you just exactly. shoot. Oh, moonwalking? Okay. Don't know what that was about. I didn't know. It, was that one of their moves? It's a new feature, yeah. So say, I didn't know new that their walking. character got remade. <laughs> What a cool move. You're able to just moonwalk and dodge bullets or something. Yeah, they added emotes. Uh, you can oh, that's Finally cool. emote in the game. That would be the worst thing to happen to this <laughs> game probably ever. <laughs> this game has a pretty acceptable community, I'd say, though. Yeah. Compared to other games. And the two-piece going out for Boise State. I think that they're not killed, but just have disconnected, which would definitely explain the moonwalking. <laughs> I didn't see a dance partner there for that, though, unfortunately. But I think that's what is going on. Yeah, just a bit of a connection issue confirmed from production. Thank you, guys. So what do you guys think so far? I mean, Boise State's showing that they have some really, really important highlights to mention, but obviously some things that need some, some work in this particular matchup. Um, but it, it could very well, again, just be the sense that Defending versus attacking, one could be easier than the other. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing, so even though it is five to, or one to five yeah. uh, for BSU, a lot of these rounds are really close. Mm -hmm. I think there was only one round where it was like a 1v3 at the end. Mm -hmm. Most of these have come down to like 2v1s or 1v1s just about. Um, and so it's just, I think, a little bit more time management and right. just getting... Uh, these situations where even if they are ahead, they're not like just stretched for time, and like we saw with the one round where they just weren't right. able to get the plant down. Yeah, two two rounds of their losses so far were due to the fact that the time had run out of the dial, forcing them to make some some rash decisions. And you know, you you start the round with this very informed mentality. You, you play through the the middle of the round with that same mentality, but then soaking up so much time with either inactivity or you know, maybe not having a, a cohesive plan, you expend the rest of the time that you gathered by being proactive. It's it's kind of a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely seems like Central Michigan knows knows the map very well and and knows those specific um, those points where they can you know breach walls and be mm -hmm. able to have line of sight straight through um, without being seen very well. You know, obviously we saw Tachanka open open his own doors up, and they obviously right. have like a good rotation down. Um, you know, as we've seen, like you were saying uh, before, with their ability to, or, you know, that the, the, they're very close rounds. I mean, we're, we're coming right. down to 2v1s, 1v1s even. Um, and I think it's just, you know, going back to those, to, to Doc's Keys of the Game and never taking a fair fight. Um, that they're they're going into situations where they have the, you know, they have the, the opportunity to lose or the, the chance to lose, which is, right. um, they're not making that bet very well. <laughs> Why speculate when they're provided to us? Of course, Doc's Keys of the Game and R6, our tr our, and, and R R6 Siege are tried and true. Know your callouts, start fast on easy prey, disorient with tacticals, and again, never take a fair fight. Of course, the Docs Keys of the Game are brought to you by Drop In Gaming. Drop In Gaming is the premier online platform for gamers who seek competition. Play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. And whether you are new to the scene or a seasoned veteran like myself, 
Dropping Gaming has the right games and competition for you. To begin your competitive gaming journey, sign up at DroppingGaming.com. And yeah, I mean, never take a fair fight. Getting the 2v1 on these long hallways, getting these peaks is a huge thing to highlight because we've seen so far them swing themselves into a position of success before that pendulum swings back and they lose momentum. So we'll just have to see whether or not they can do it. And as much as I like the sledge, I think it's it's not something that's uh, providing too much utility for them. They they do have some other options with hard breaching. They could even go for a little bit more of a, a softer breach approach, approach with more gathered information being the decisive factor there. But we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. One big thing with Coastline is there's just not a lot of locations for sledge like he yeah. can he can punch holes downward but he mm -hmm. can't punch holes upward unless right. you know someone gives him some stilts or something <laughs> gotta be the most infuriating thing ever by the way like physically being able to punch down but just not being able to punch upwards you know <laughs> feels like something that a man with a giant hammer should be able to do but then again i didn't design the game looks like we're gonna do some replays here from we see state able to take one away and if we can see that four piece there on the side for Central Michigan, that would also be impressive. And it's, I mean, it's it's up to really Boise State because despite the score not being in their favor, I feel like they are in the driver's seat in most of these rounds. And it's either their decisions that get them in a position to win or their, their, their lack of um, good decision making or just lack of decisions in general that are putting them in the, the L for that round. Mm-hmm. Would you guys agree? I you would can say disagree so. with me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. No, I'm I, uh, I, I think it'll I be. Think. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think it'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, when the when the when the tide turns and and they're able to switch roles. Mm -hmm. You know, the Boise State able to show off, kind of you know what they've practiced and what they know as far as the map and and getting those um, getting those areas down and those rotations down for sure. Um, yeah, I think I think it's just come down to. The simple fact of you know taking fights that you have the opportunity to lose, and um, you know there's there's been a couple of picks that haven't really you know had a lot of utility, uh, not a lot of team-based uh, picks that we've right. seen. I mean Flores, you know we've seen a number of times, but uh, I, I think I have yet to see like a good uh, you know solid like play through that and and how he's able to use that mm -hmm. uh, team based so the the iana i think was a was a safe bet you know for intel gathering making sure that um where they're entering is not currently being rotated um but they definitely have it down to a t i'm excited to see what boise state can do uh on defense yeah absolutely big question mark where's the doka be <laughs> how would that fit how would that how would that not work I mean, with a lot of the intel gathering they have right now, like Adokabi would have been pretty good in place right. of Flores. I totally, hey. totally agree. I think I think say? part of the reason it might be might be due to the to the Valk ban that happened near the beginning, because you know Adokabi obviously has a lot of utility, especially when those cameras have been put up in in places that they aren't normally. Mm -hmm. um, you can get a lot of utility out of the Adokabi uh, with the Valk cams for sure. I agree. Also, probably the cutest. Uh, if there's ever something to be attributed to an emote, it's Dokubi's abilities in general, right? <laughs> Just the, oh, look, it's a little kawaii little, oh, wait, my phone, it's going off. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, I mean, we, we see Boise State putting themselves in positions of panic by the timer running out. Dokubi, in and of herself, almost creates those at a moment's notice. Like, your cell phone's going off in the movie theater. How how much anxiety do you then compress into your body? <laughs> and that's just the movie theater, let alone when someone's going around with, you know, an M6 coming around the corner looking for you, you know? So, it's possible. Not going to see it. It doesn't look like this round, but able to get this nice and set up. Here comes the barricades. Still there barricade skins. Here. Why are there not barricade skins in this game? <laughs> Opportunity. You're about to get a call from uh, from Ubisoft about that. Oh, hold on. I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Is Hello? it Dokubi? It's literally Dokubi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. The spam calls, exactly. <laughs> uh, let me turn my phone off. <laughs> it looks like a... We don't really know just yet. Boise State kind of spawning at the same location. Haven't really determined whether or not they want to stick together. It doesn't look like the full cohesion's the motif for this round for them. 
But they don't have a lot of rounds to play around with on attack anymore moving forward. They're getting dangerously close to switching back over to defense. We'll have to see what happens when that swap does occur. Oh my goodness. And I mean, speak of cohesion, we see some uh, clone in the room in front, which would only distract for a moment. And then two members here from Central Michigan in tandem, ready to, to spring in a moment's notice. And that's just you know, what, what's going to happen on the other side of the map. It's going to be 12 gates. No four piece for them this time as Korn will take it out. They will find the diffuser. They find at least one site, I believe, so far. Ah, grenade launching. Very cool. Chachanka, everyone. Oh, my oh, wow. goodness 